Yesterday morning, we went out and took a look at Key Wayden Island and Rookery Bay following the impacts from Hurricane Irma, which occurred on September 10th. And we were really looking at the impact of at least an initial assessment of how it impacted the ecosystem and what those impacts were. It was really interesting. So one thing that uh, folks have really noticed is the water is very brown right now. And that's natural. That is our natural tannin process because normally mangrove trees drop all these leaves in the water usually get a nice tanning color. Well, of course, a hurricane with category three winds come through and they're gonna knock a whole bunch of these leaves in the water. Those wind and waves are also gonna stir up those sediments. So right now it's a very turbid, very brown system. The huge things we saw in Key Wayden Island yesterday was that areas actually did a lot better because the reserve had invested and worked with the state millions of dollars in Australian pine removal in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. What that meant is that the system is going to be able to bounce back much quicker to make it much safer for sea turtle nesting and to allow that sand to naturally move back on the beach over time. Mangroves do a lot of incredible things. Of course, in a, uh, in a healthy natural ecosystem, they really are important for nutrient cycling. They absorb storm surge. They also break down some of that wind. Uh, as the wind comes in from a hurricane, you know, there's a little bit of that friction effect and actually will knock down some of that wind. But storm surge is really important. If, you know, for smart building communities and for resilient communities, it's important to have those mangroves there as your first line of natural defense. This is natural infrastructure. And the state and NOAA have invested millions of dollars to protect Collier County and protect private property by having this natural buffer out there. Because at the end of the day, you really want those mangroves taking that impact, not your house, not your property. For those of you volunteers that were following along with what was going on down here in September for the hurricane, I thought I would give you a little insight as to what went on. Um, we took quite a bit of time to prepare for the hurricane, which is quite a task. All of our staff involved working nonstop for several days to prepare the grounds, the buildings, Shell Island Road, Goodland, uh, quite a bit of work to do. Putting the shutters up on all the windows, bringing everything from in, outside back in that would uh, be impacted by the wind, including picnic tables, preparing the aquariums. So prior to closing up and getting ready for the hurricane to arrive the next day, I know that uh, Janine and I, with the help of uh, Ryan, came in to do uh, one last feeding of the fish. Um, they are on life support, so the fish did just fine. Within a couple days, um, I had come back to the center to see what had happened. Uh, of course, no electricity and devastation along the way. No power in town, no gasoline, as you know. So um, coming in the front gates was quite a shock. The amount of debris all over made the front door unrecognizable. The, the grounds were just a total mess, front, back, side, driveway, everywhere, and you can see that from the pictures. Um, how we got all that very much cleaned up within two weeks is amazing to me, which is a joint effort with the entire staff, resource management and all the equipment, um, staff working tirelessly in the 95 degree heat and humidity. Um, really a lot of teamwork took place here. So the big, the effort cleaning up the grounds here involved um, the resource managers using the chainsaws and the rest of us dragging these pieces away to piles which they would then pick up with this giant claw and bring out to Tower Road. Piles along Tower Road were necessary because the county would come along and pick all these piles up. So there were piles all over every road in Collier County, as you can imagine, or may have seen already by pictures. However, the snail trail did remain closed for some time after that, just for safety reasons because of the amount of trees that did fall down. We did have help from a sister reserve that came down with chainsaws and helped cut all that up and help our resource managers. And then, of course, the other big obvious mess that was left was the styrofoam and aluminum from the trailer park across 951 found itself up and down Henderson Creek and all over our trails. So big pieces, little pieces, you name it. Well, we've been cleaning up that ever since. 
beginning with the Red Bull event that happened in November, which was very helpful. Red Bull redirected their efforts to help us because of their race being canceled out at Cape Romano, which was rescheduled for February. Uh, what a great effort that was. They brought in paddleboarders and kayakers, and we joined in with our staff and volunteers, and truckloads of foam were recovered from the trail, and mostly up and down Henderson Creek. We continued our trail effort of cleaning up the foam uh, since that time, and as recently as last week. We're still pulling foam off the trail, but it is not obvious as you walk out there anymore. It's just in far-reaching areas. But we are determined to get every last piece of that out there. So thanks to groups like Grinnell College and FGCU um, and our regular volunteers that help on our trails, we're really making headway. Inside, we were very fortunate. There was only a tiny bit of water in the lab, some an awning ripped off. Another trail that was heavily affected by the hurricane was down the end of Shell Island Road, our trail through time. And a work day sometime in November was set up with staff mostly staff and some volunteers that were available to do more hard work. There is obviously a lot of questions from the public about, you know, the resilience of the community and the wildlife and the plants. So our education department did an excellent job of updating our volunteers um, to be prepared to answer a lot of these questions to the public. Here at Rookery Bay National Estuary and Research Reserve, we take hurricane uh, preparation very seriously. And we start usually in about April putting together teams. One of the big tasks that we tackle is getting all of our boats to safety. Rookery Bay has 14 vessels and the majority of them stay in the water the majority of the time. But during a potential storm impact, we will get all of those boats onto their respective trailers and move them to safe ground. So we use Florida Southwest State College as a location because of the elevation there, which is significantly higher than what we are here at sea level. Probably the largest asset or largest value asset that we lost was the research vessel, Stella. We did trailer that vessel to Florida Southwestern State College. Unfortunately, even with the proactive measures that we took, the high winds of the storm did blow that vessel onto its side. The only other damage we had to our vessels were a windshield damage to one of to our hydrosport as well as the bimini top from that. We lost a couple other bimini tops. We did have a trailer that due to the amount of water that vessel held bent under the weight of the water load. As we responded to the damage of Hurricane Irma, our first task was to make our way down Shell Island Road. Shell Island Road right after the hurricane was impassable and it took us about two days with a team of about five people to clear that road. Fortunately we had good chainsaw ears as well as some heavy equipment to help clear that. When we got to the end of the road we saw our pole barn had sustained pretty significant damage. One of the overhead roll-up doors landed completely inside the shop on top of tractors and other tools and an opposite wall was blown out. The sign shed that's adjacent to the pole barn also had sustained significant damage and another shed behind the pole barn was destroyed. Thanks to great help from volunteers and staff, we were able to go ahead and tear down the remains of those two sheds and have the area prepped for replacements as soon as they're available. The repairs to the pole barn took a little bit longer than we would have liked. Um, however, we were able to get contractors in there to reframe and hang a roll-up door and also repair the damage to the wall. If you're interested, you can still see some existing hurricane damage by looking at the Chicky Hut in the backyard. The wind did a number on that, just leaning it over a bit, and fortunately it didn't fall. Some of the native palms fared very well, but we did have one in our parking lot that while it didn't go down, it got bent over quite far. And again, thanks to the help for, from volunteers, the Rusty Zippers, we got that tree straightened back up again, and she not only is gonna survive, but thrive. The Goodland Field Station, as I visited immediately following this storm, we had about six inches of water in the shed. Unfortunately, the dorm did not have any water intrusion, but the shed sustained not only the water damage, but also wind damage. 
And so we had to go ahead and help Hurricane Irma by tearing it down the rest of the way. Is that staff and volunteers came together and did a fantastic job getting this place, Rookery Bay, back open. The administrative offices opened the Monday, a week following the storm's impact, which is phenomenal. And the ELC was prepped and ready for visitors to return shortly thereafter.